Hello, Ruskif here, and uh, this is my first Expression Advanced tutorial. And today we're going to learn how to make this holographic sphere here. It's a bunch of um, holograms using a bit of trigonometry to create a sphere, and then holograms just have trails on. So, shall we jump right in? Right, let's remove that. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our editor and we're going to delete our base code um, or the default code there. I'm going to click the set script name button firstly and call this tab Holosphere. There we go. Okay, click it to get rid of it again. Right, so first thing we're going to need to do is decide where our code needs to run. So Expression Advanced 2 can run code client side and server side and there's two ways to define this. If you do it inside like the root code it will appear on both and then you can use server or client side blocks to determine whether code is going to run purely client side or purely server side. We'll get more into this in another video. Um, so let's decide. So we're going to go into our user manual here, uh, components and hologram already open for me. And what you'll notice is that the availability of all of the hologram functions is actually server side. So I think that makes the point for us, right? Everything we're going to need to do is going to be server side. Okay, holograms are purely server side. So let's start off by doing that. So here's our server side uh, definition. This means that any code that appears between these two curly braces is going to be ran server side only. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is give ourselves a few um, variables just so we know uh, constant values basically. So we know how many holograms we're going to want what the radius of our sphere is going to be and what the scale of each hologram is, okay? So, um, let's start off by finding a number. That's the type of our variable. Then we're going to need a name for our variable. Um, in this count case, we're going to call this one um, holograms. Okay, so that's how many holograms we're going to need. And ooh, go for 30 holograms shall we and we're going to need another number and this is going to be our radius and we're going to have should we say radius of our sphere is going to be 100 now the thing I don't like here is that we've got two values of a number on two separate lines so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do this instead uh, radius okay so now um, this is basically uh, something you can do in most languages like C++, um, C Sharp, Java whatever so holograms and radius are both defined on the same line they're both the same type so we can do this holograms is 30 radius is 100 Okay, simple. Let's move on. We want a vector now, and this is going to be the scale of our holograms. So, scale, and it's going to be 0 0.025. Okay, and that should be point. Now, you notice that I'm not actually defining x, y, and z inside this vector. Um, when just one value is specified to the vec function in expression advanced to, it will actually define x, y, and z to be that exact value. So that's fine. We don't need to worry about you know extra code that we don't need. Next, we need the position of um, our sphere. So vector position equals. Let's start with getting the entity. So we're going to get the position of the entity. Notice how we are not doing this because in Expression Advanced 2 we use a more 
C star syntax where it's dot rather than that. Okay. And that that is how we do our methods. And then we're just basically going to add uh, entity dot up I think it is times radius. Okay. That is the entity's position plus the radius of the circle. That's cool. In my fact, we want it slightly above the chip, so let's times that by 1.15. Uh, yeah, that'll do. So the next thing we're going to need to do is define or create our holograms. So we're going to do that in a for loop. So for um, number i equals 1. Holograms um, and step of one. So this is your basic for loop. You define your value uh, for your for loop. So that in this case it's i, and then i is going to start at one. It's going to increment up until it reaches well until i is the value of holograms, and it's going to increase by one. Um, Okay, so now basically everything that appears between these two curly braces is going to run once per iteration of i. So the first time, so this for loop in the same execution is going to run um, 30 times. It's going to run first with i being 1, then it's going to run with i being 2, i being 3, etc, etc, etc. If we change that to 2, it would start with I would be 1, then I would be 3, then I would be 5. Okay. But for now, we're, well, we're just going to leave it as an increment of 1. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to need to do is get a color for our holograms, which is. We're going to start by defining a color object. And then it's just going to be hollow color, and uppercase to color equals hs b two r g b, and hmm, i times three hundred and sixty divided by holograms. I mean, you won't, probably won't even uh, know what this does, but basically this is just using a bit of, uh, well, a bit of math to give us a nice smooth color to use for a hologram. If we take a look in the uh, helper for what HSVRGB does, which you can do by clicking on browser, and then just simply type in H S and here we are. Converts H S V colour to a regular colour. Okay, so if you don't know what this does, then basically I'm not gonna explain it to you. Right, so I'm gonna create a hologram now. So in expression advanced two, holograms are actually objects. They are not numbers. You all understand what I mean. So we're creating an object and this is going to be our hologram. Or oh, we'll just call it hollow for short. Uh, hollow object. There we go. Equals I'm gonna hologram and let me get the model here there we are so the next thing we need to do is you see how we are using the hologram as an object here now we use a method set material and the material we're going to use is debug white 
So here we are, debug Y. And then what we need to do is set its position. So hollow object.set position. This is just its first position, and that's just going to be very simply entity position. Okay. And then we need to also hollow object.set color and we're going to use the hollow color here and then ob dot shading right so now we're using a boolean here so we're disabling the shading of our hologram and instead of doing 0 and 1 like in E2 we use true and false so True is the equivalent of just one, and false is the equivalent to just zero. It's faster, simpler, and easier. Really, um, not going to go too much into depth on that. And then we're going to want to set an ID for this hologram. Okay, so because we won't have access to this object outside of the for loop, we're going to give it an ID so we can access it later. This is very similar to E2 holograms um, and the way that they work off IDs, whereas especially in Advance 2, holograms are objects that you can just access via an ID if you choose to. So ID is simply just going to be I. And then we're going to want to set a trail for it. Set trail. Here we go. Right, and we're going to use the radius divided by 10, and then we're going to use that again, and then now the material we're going to use for this is trails for this laser, and then we're going to use our hollow color and 200 as that. Okay, so now we have all our holograms created. Let's check to see if it validates. <gasps> Hologram does not exist because that should be holograms. Oops. There we go. Spawn it down and you'll see that right now we have a big mess up. So somewhere something has gone wrong because that hologram should not be that size. So, oh, we haven't set its scale. So set scale, and we're just going to use scale from up here. Boom, and dirt. And now, there we go. All our holograms are contained inside that one wall. Hologram there, which is blue. And you can see that... Uh, our wheel isn't turning, which means that our gauge ran, it's used a bit of performance and now it's stopped. The um, wheel on that model indicates the usage of the expression advance 2, for those who don't know. Um, right, so, the next thing we're going to need to do is an event, and this is where our trigonometry is going to happen. Um, but before we do that, we're going to need another value. So um, then it's just going to be a basic number and it's just going to be called uh, J. Okay, use J. Now we're going to need an event here. An event tick. Right, what this means here is that we're creating an event. An event is very similar to a user defined function. If you know what those are in E2, if you have experience with E2, then you know what they are. If not, then I'll explain it in a later video. But needless to say, anything that is between these two curly braces is going to happen whenever this event is called. Now, the event is called outside of our code. So when the server ticks, the tick event is going to be called. So when the server ticks anything 
between these curly braces is going to be called. Okay. Now we need another for loop here, so we're going to use for number and use i again equals one, and that's going to be holograms, basically the same as our uh, previous for loop. Okay. Now we're going to need to do a little bit of trigonometry and maths here, and hmm. Okay, cool. So we're going to get an angle first of all. And we're going to create an angle here. Right, so the angle needs to basically uh, calculate. Okay. So I'm not going to explain this in too much depth um, simply because trigonometry is above your average kind of thing but it, it's something you're going to need to learn later on online go on wikipedia look it up whatever um yeah so i times five i times five i times 360 divided by count no not count uh holograms there we go Oh, and we need to also name our angle. It's going to just be ang equals. There we go. Right. And we only need a vector as well. And um, we're going to put this vec equals. Right. This is where our trigonometry actually comes into play. So, so we're going to start off with the cos, which is going to be 360 divided by holograms plus j right and then exact same thing again we're going to use sin instead and then we're going to use zero for our z and then we're going to get our hologram um, via id i so now we're looking up a hologram by ID. So we're not creating a hologram by giving it a string of the model. We're just giving it I, which is going to look it up from its ID, which is set here. Okay, and we're going to set its position to be radius times vec rotate ang plus our position from up there okay and then what we need to do is just increment j so j equals j plus 0 0.3 we're using 0 0.3 because we want to slow down the rate that this is running um, and we make this simpler actually by just doing plus equals 0 0.3 it all validates and spawn it down and here we are and that is basically it I know that this has been pretty much a rubbish tutorial um, expect more of these rubbish tutorials later on matter of fact, let's just speed this up a little bit Six. A little bit faster. Hmm. And that's creating a holosphere. Anyway, very crappy tutorial. Um, yeah. Peace.